Also, as well, a quick reminder, a couple of people have uh, pointed out to me that uh, a lot of people, spectators down here, aren't aware that it is a combined race. It is race two and race five on the program. It is the junior solo founders and the junior race. It's going to be quite difficult, I think, because uh, we've got some of the junior solo founders on our programs on the previous page and also on page 24, so it could be a lot of flicking to and fro. What I will try and do is bring a full list of all the riders to you very, very shortly. But I don't know if you're experiencing rain down there. It's still just spitting here, Roy. No, there's no uh, sign as yet. The marshal's again checking the surface, but it does remind me, I think, last year, or was it? Uh, well, again, the memory fades, but certainly... I know that they did a warm-up lap on particular tyre choice, whether it was last year or the year before, and then when they got back to the start and finish, there'd been a heavy shower. In fact, I think it was last year, there'd been a heavy shower, and, of course, when they got back there, they weren't too keen on going out on the slicks. One or two of them made it known that they weren't going to do it that way and zoomed off to the paddock to change the wheels into intermediates. It was a good choice because that slight delay in it meant that the roads were still wet, but uh, they got the race underway a little bit later on time. So it is a problem which occurs, and obviously in the interest of safety, the decision is made uh, that uh, time delay will be put onto this particular one, if required, and they do it. But at the moment, across four ways, which is only two, two and three-quarter miles plus away from you, Dave, certainly the conditions are OK here, as well, far as we are aware. It's holding off. The bikes have actually now left the holding area. Whether or not they were just having a look skywards to see whether the weather could uh, change a little bit for the worse, we don't know. Maybe that's why they delayed them and held them back. But certainly all the bikes in this Junior Solo Founders Junior Race are now leaving the holding area and they'll be going round Balakagan Corner. So... Uh, I don't know, it's going to be, um, it's a commentator's nightmare this one I think actually Roy because we're going to be looking at uh, some of the numbers from page 18 of our programme and uh, page 24. But um, also as well there are two classes in this aren't there Roy? Yes we've got one, two, fives and all, well there's three actually Dave, oh, yes, we've got is, yes. uh, one, two, fives and you've got to look out for the old 400 super sports in amongst that lot as well. Dave madsen Migdal uh, upset everybody last time. I think he won the actual 400 class in the steam packet race, but the 125s were a little bit too quick for those. So that's a separate class, but certainly it's going to be competitive in that one with the amount of entry there's going to be. And then the other one is 126 or 125 upwards to 350. And the majority on that particular one favour the either 250 Yamaha or 250 Honda, which are the tool for the job, as it were, Going back into the old Southern 100 program, well then, on the Wednesday night, correspondingly on the Wednesday night, it always used to be 250, 350 and 500. But then again, there was predominantly 250 and 350 Yamahas, and the 500s, well, going back into the 60s, was G50 Matulises and Nortons, etc. I remember Terry Shepherd coming to ground here one particular year we were spectating across four ways, would be the early 60s, skived off school in the afternoon, and the next thing, a G50 mattress arrived without a rider sliding along the ground. And it was none other than then Terry Shepard who went on to become a works rider for MZ and also for Honda. So that was one. So the bikes now should be well on our way to approach us here. We'll try and spot one or two and see who they're riding and what they're riding and whether they're going for a particular class or not. I suppose it will be a tactical choice. They'll know that Joey probably will be out but then again, he's got a choice to make, whether he goes for the 250. Although he was entered on the 250 in the race two, officially last night, and he was also entered on the 250 on the Man Auto Car Sales Junior race. So that could be the fact that he might be favourite for that. They might opt, but I think number, number 16 will have a little bit to say. Joey is on the 250. Jason Griffiths, 250. Joey, 250. Richardson 250, the majority 250s. There's the first 125. There's Robert Dunlop, 21. Ian Locker's got the 250 as well. Matt Jackson, 125, 29, 50. Neil Cudsworth, 29, 25, and 65, 400s. So look out for the blue plates for the 400 class. That's a separate identity running. It's black plates for 125. And, of course, you've got the traditional green plates for the 250. 
but there seems a tremendous entry for this particular one and obviously there's going to be a bit of a speed differential it'll be the 250s probably that will get away first the two traveling marshals go around it's number 40 so we'll just check out to see whether that was in fact number 40 Carl Bell regular campaigner down here and he's also got a 400 Honda so that could be a bit of a chance again a clutch start for both events the engines will be running there's a tremendous entry I must admit and as you say it's going to be a commentator's nightmare but I'm pretty certain now they'll be getting lined up the traditional little uh, yellow uh, pegs on the side of the road to indicate which grid position they're in it's going to be a tremendous sight as they all dash away there, Dave, down at start and finish. Yes, I think they'll just be uh, warming their tyres up still at the moment because they've not come into view yet. Uh, certainly, I know Joey Dunlop had a little wander around there, around his um, team van the other night. It's quite funny, actually, to see Joey, the little modest van, all the other guys with their big motorhomes and uh, marquees and what have you. Joey with his little van there with just the 250 and the 750 in the background. Now, the official car comes into view and uh, quite a few bikes and certainly uh, there were far far too many to count as they left the holding area before this <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm looking forward to this one or not um, it's going to be very very interesting let's just give you a rundown again on the, the how they start for this race it is at uh, 10 laps of course 42 and a half miles the front row consists of number five Ian Locker number 16 Richard Coates and number three Joey Dunlop all on 250 Hondas Second row, Neil Richardson. He's been going very well in practice. He's also on a 250 Honda. Joining him on the second row are Jason Griffiths on the 250 Yamaha and 28 John McCulloch on a 125 Honda. Third row of the grid, 33 Brian Neal, 18 Darren Lindsay, number four Robert Dunlop. And uh, the fourth row of the grid, Chris Palmer, Matt Jackson and Alan Bud Jackson. So now we await the final bikes to line up on the uh, start line here on the Balan circuit just next to Castletown it looks as if the rain is going to hold off the uh, nasty black clouds that were here before are now becoming not so nasty dark clouds but uh, as we now wait for as the red flag is moved away from the start finish line we now get ready we can't see the lights from here but certainly those riders on the grid can we wait and see and uh, the first indication we get from this position is the noise of the engines and not the bikes moving because we're they're straight on, it looks good. There's a signal getting ready to go. They're revving up, here they go, and they're off. And they're weaving around all over the place, but it's certainly, it's number five, and Joey's up there. Joey. And this, um, we've got uh, someone's come together there there's a couple of riders they seem to be okay they're up walking about uh, there's two machines down I can't tell who it is from here but certainly um, going back to the race it was uh, number five Ian Locker he was quickest away Joey Dunlop and Richard Coates the first three they were the guys to uh, really get away but uh, the bikes have been cleared from the course the riders seem to be okay that's uh, the news from here I didn't actually see I was so busy looking at uh, Ian Locker Dunlop and Coates burning away from everybody else that I didn't actually see what happened but uh, from Dave Moore here at the start and finish line the two riders I'll go and have a quick look Roy and see who it is find out who's not competing and then uh, give you an, okay, an update on that Roy Moore cross four ways yes this is going to be pretty high, fast and uh, hectic Dave so you won't be able to spend too much time on there because he's the come but I think survival will be the, the, the name of the game a uh, nice kind of uh, you go first etc uh, kind of thing to get the, the, the thing underway and then once they get riding well that will be it but Richard Coates I really do fancy him for a good performance here tonight Joey Dunlop, Robert Dunlop well on the 125 won't be amongst it Neil Richardson who's it going to be we can hear the uh, the classic races well the last one you could hear the triple coming down this time it sounds like a, a herd of wasps or a swarm of wasps even coming down here towards us across four ways because they're all two strokes predominantly apart from those 400 Hondas and it is Ian Locker who leads very very quick into cross four ways absolutely flying and it's Richard Coates who's second Joey Dunlop third number three and number ten that's last year's winner Neil Richardson 33 18 the first of the 125s 19 39 65 38 37 31 21 29 72 50 28 68 61 25 49 78 69 67 51 and 76 that's the order as they go through here number 60 is the last to come through no it's not it's Bob Doughty number 62 I'm pretty certain they won't be far away from you Dave at the start and finish 
Yes, there's no one in sight. They've just been clearing the circuit, but it seems to be clear of all the debris now. If there was any debris, it's very little bits and pieces of plastic and what have you. As we can hear them in the distance, no bikes in view yet, but uh, we're expecting Ian Locker, number five, to come through with Richard Coates, number 16, and Joey Dunlop. And there's a bike in view now. It's Locker. Ian Locker through first there. He's got a mighty, mighty gap. Followed there by Coates, Dunlop and Neil Richardson. They're the first four, he's fifth. That's 33. Brian Neil coming through there in fifth place and a whole scutch. There's that word again. A whole posse of riders coming through here. There's 72, 68, 25, 61, 49, 78 and 69. I've just noticed as well, there's quite a few flash cameras going off, and uh, I'm sure the riders don't need that. If uh, you can hear us on this commentary, you can refrain. I know the light is fading, but uh, as I turn certainly up there, well past the holding area, there are flash lights going off, flash bolts going away. The riders certainly don't need that on this circuit. So let's give you a quick update. Number one is uh, first place, number five, Ian Locker. Second, number 16, Richard Coates. Third place, Joey Dunlop. And uh, in fourth place, number 10, Neil Richardson. And fifth place, Brian Neil. Uh, he's on number 33. And uh, we'll hand over... Jason Griffiths is sixth. We'll hand over to Roy Moore because I'm sure they're going to be there. They won't be too far away, Dave, I'm pretty certain, but a tremendous lead by Ian Locker on the first lap. He must have got a good head start there. Absolutely flying, taking over from his 1-2-5 win in the TT. And it's Ian Locker who leads this particular one, and I don't think there'll be any change. We can hear the distinctive sound of something heading towards us, past Maggie's Cottage, into the left-hander, brakes, and very, very quick indeed. This is a much quicker pace. He is absolutely flying, Ian Locker, and it's Richard Coates still holding on to second, 16, followed by number three, Joey Dunlop. There's Richardson, number 10, and they've pulled out a bit of an advantage now. They've stringed them out because it's Richard, it's number 33, Brian Neal, who's just, just got ahead there of number two, Jason Griffiths. There's the first of the 250s, Darren Lindsay, but number four, Dunlop is right on his tail. There's the third of the two, 125s, I'm afraid, 19. Chris Palmer, Bud Jackson, followed by his brother Andy, and they all stream through here, 65. William Philp, and number 50, Neil Cudworth, 28. But it was still Ian Locker by the proverbial mile here at lap two at cross four ways. But Dunlop on the pace as well. And Richardson, and they're stringing themselves out now as they go through. So I don't, didn't notice who was the best of the 400s. But I think it could have been Dave Madston Migdal. There's another 400, number 51, Barry Davidson. And 62 and 60, so it's round about the same time that we handed back last time to Dave Moore at the start and finish. Well, I think they're picking up speed because Ian Locker is going round. His first lap is 97.08. Dunlop is certainly still second. Third place, uh, number three, Joey, um, um, Joey Dunlop is uh, third, I should say, with t number 10, Neil Hitchman. There goes Robert Dunlop, number four, comes past. These are well down the field now, that's uh, number 19, comes through. 38, 39, 37, 21, 31, 6, 29, taking 65 as they come past us here on the start of this line. A couple more bikes in view, there's 50, followed by number 28. And uh, more, more bikes, 32, 49. 78 and 61. So we'll give you a very quick before we go back to Roy. Leading uh, on lap number, at the end of lap number two, as they start lap number three, is uh, Ian Locker. Followed by number 16, Richard Coates. Joey Dunlop is third. Uh, fourth, Neil Richardson. Fifth now is uh, Jason Griffiths. He swapped places with uh, number 33, Brian Neal. In seventh place, Darren Lindsay. Team. And Dunlop, uh, Joey Robert Dunlop is eighth overall. That's not the classes, of course, but that's what they're doing on the road. Roy Moore, cross four ways. Yes, and Ian Locker, tremendous advantage he had there and seemed to be increasing it. Certainly he's the fastest thing I've seen round cross four ways and he's going to get another demonstration now. Number five absolutely heals it over. The machine sound, he just drives it away. A beautiful sound. You can hear it going up through the gearbox as he accelerates away, but this dice is still there between the same three. Richard Coates, Joey Dunlop, three, and Richardson, Ian Richardson, number ten. Safely, Neil Richardson, my apologies, and they are pulling well away now from, by himself, number two, Jason Griffiths, so 
Brian Neal gone missing on that particular one. Well, Ian Locker was giving him a bit of advice on suspension set up in the paddock the other night, such as the camaraderie between all these riders. Here's the first two, 250, uh, one 125s. It's 18 Lindsay ahead of number four Dunlop. So Dunlop's got that machine running okay. And the third 125, number 19, Chris Palmer. A 250, 38 and 39, that's the two Jacksons, but I'm pretty certain the battle, Ian Locker won't be far from you, Dave Moore. Yes, he comes into view now, lovely, lovely line as he whims it down here, passes here, here's Locker. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, his coat. Coach Dunlop and Richardson there, so we're talking about a 12-second gap there for Ian Lockers. They came past us here. There's now a big, big gap for the fifth man on the road. There he's number two, Jason Griffiths, the Ramsey man. He comes through, he's fifth on the road. We should now see Brian. This should be Brian Neal with Darren Lindsay and Robert Dunlop coming through. In fact, uh, it's number 18, Darren Lindsay and Robert Dunlop, so Brian Neal could well be a retirement. 19, 38, 39, 37, 29, 21, 31. Well, I think the way Locker's going, we better go back to Roy Moore across four ways. Yes, we're just trying to keep check now on the 400 class. I, I don't know, I, would, I wouldn't put my reputation on it, but it looks as though number 68, Mike Blake, might be leading that. There's no doubting that number in the 250 class, it's Ian Locker. There's that tremendous dice between Darren Lindsay and Robert Dunlop for the 125s. The 250s, as we just mentioned, it's Ian Locker. And the three behind them, all 350 mounted, but it looked as though, uh, just by judging by the sounds, as no number 68, Mike Blake, had a slender advantage in the 400 class over there, number 25, Dave Madsen Migdal. But that's something to look out for. But Ian Locker's here now, lap four. And the same distinctive line and the same power of that particular machine. We commented on it last year. He just drives it through on a very low gear on the overrun. And Richard Coates still holding on to second place in the sandwich is Joey Dunlop. And come exactly the same. The last lap, Neil Richardson, number 10 there. So that should be a good dice. They've held station all the way from the first lap here across four ways. And a lonely ride for Jason Griffiths, number two. He's on the 250 as well and goes through. No problem at all. And just gets it on the pipe, just gets the revs soaring up and gets it underway and under drive towards the church bends. The road is absolutely quiet now, but I'm pretty certain the next we'll see is that little 125 dice, and it is. And Darren Lindsay uh, comes up the inside, and Robert Dunlop, he's looking out from on there. So we'll keep tax on that, four, that 400 class day, but such is the pace of this race that I think Ian Locker won't be too far Locker. away from you. Here's Locker. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. His coach done lock. So lock has certainly pulled out three seconds. I don't have to stop watch here, but uh, I think uh, my county was pretty much on the ball there. Those are the first four through. Fifth man on the road should be Jason Griffiths. Gets the thumbs up there from his man. Yes, Jason Griffiths, fifth on the road, number two there. A late entry. That's uh, Jason on the 250 Yamaha. We should now get that uh, battle. Will it be Darren Lindsay? Will it be Robert Dunlop? There's one bike. There's two bikes coming into view. Yes, it's Darren Lindsay by about half a second from Robert Dunlop. There was the first six bikes through. There's more bikes on the, on the way now. I can just see them coming round the corner over the rise. Here we go. 19, 38, 39, 29. 37 and 21. Taking 31 straight past me here. Very nice. Slipstream him all the way up the straight and made his move. So a quick run down as they start lap number five. It's Ian Locker by a mile and a bit from uh, number 16, Richard Coates, the local man. Number three, Joey Dunlop is third, and fourth place, Neil Richardson. Jason Griffiths is fifth, Darren Lindsay sixth, Robert Dunlop seventh. Now, uh, go back to Roy of four at cross four ways. Locker's just gone through, and he's overtaken Monica Flooding, and number 40 there, Carl Bell. 
Well, the 400s look to be getting led by number 65, which is a tremendous achievement. That's number 65, William Flip on the 400 Kawasaki, but it's still the same three, second, third, and fourth. It's Coates, Dunlop, and Richardson, second, third, and fourth. And But uh, Leon Locker well ahead, maintaining station, holding on to that advantage. And Mike Blake and Dave Madsen Migdal have now swapped places. And I'm just assuming it's very difficult to kind of uh, decipher it. But it looks as though Dave Madsen Migdal will now be up to second place in the 400s. That's another thing we'll keep check on. We're looking for that 1-2-5 battle now. Ian Locker, meanwhile, will be well on his way through the stadium and into. He can hear the little buzz of the single-cylinder Hondas, and he's just holding on, but Robert Dunlop right behind him. There's Darren Lindsay. Robert Dunlop, as quickly as that, they put the throttle on to get the power on at the same time, but Ian Locker won't be far away from you, Dave, at the start and finish. Uh, we've missed him. He's now uh, just coming round to the approach to Ballincagan corner, so he's through, but the way he's going, uh, you can't blame Roy Moore. Here we go. There's a back mark in the middle. Nine there comes through, and there's Dunlop ahead of Richard Coates. Dunlop is through ahead of Richard Coates. So, up until this point, it would have been Coates second, Dunlop third, but now Dunlop is past Richard Coates. He's second place. Richard Coates. Airlines pilot as Manx Airlines fly over is here. Come through. There's number two, Jason Griffiths. Neil Richardson came through as well. Neil Richardson is fourth. So, it's Ian Lock. It looks like as long as he doesn't have a mechanical problem between here and the end of the race, as we come on into the second part of the race, it's Ian Locker, number five, by a mile, and uh, a bit more this time. Number two, uh, number three, Joey Dunlop is second, and uh, third spot, it's um, Richard Coates. Now he's dropped down. He's been second all the race until this point. Neil Richardson, fourth. Here we go. And Dunlop's going. Oh, Dunlop's looking at Darren Lindsay. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. He's having a peep. He's trying, and Dunlop, he moves out again, moves wide, moves to the right, as we look round, and no, Dunlop holds on to it, just as he comes to Balakagan corner, but Robert Dunlop was all over Darren Lindsay like a rash, and I would have suspect that with all the racing going on behind me, we probably missed Ian Locker across always. Dave, he's not here as yet. And it looks as though oh, he didn't get that particular 400 one. It looks as though Dave Madsen Migdal might be now leading that. But there's Ian Locker. We strike another lap off. I think that's now lap up to lap number six of this 10 lap race. He's on his sixth lap and absolutely pulling out away. This is number 60 who's with us here now. We'll give him a mention. 60, Phil Corlett. Well, it's nice to see him back lazing, but Dunlop has broken away from them. Dunlop has taken the advantage away there from now into third, Richard Coates. And number 10, Neil Richardson, now down to fourth. Dunlop has pulled away. He's made the break. And will he have the power to get on up anywhere near Ian Locker? I don't think so, because Ian Locker has got a tremendous advantage here. There's Jason Griffiths again, so look out for that 400 dice. Number two, Jason Griffiths, 59. Monica Flooding again is with us. Andy Bacon there. And 40 and 70. Well, we've mentioned them the last time. Carl Bell. I'm pretty certain, though, that we just might be able to hold on for that 1-2-5 dice to see whether he's got it. And then go back to you, Dave, for the... Because Ian Locker, no doubt, will have flown through the start and finished by now. We'll just give you an update on the 1-2-5s. No, it's still... Yes or no? Dunlop's got him. Dunlop's got him. It's number four. Robert Dunlop from 18. Darren Lindsay. Back to you, Dave. Yes, Locker has come through. He uh, must have taken a lot of lot of back markers. There's about four or five there as he come around. Here's Dunlop. Joey Dunlop. Oh, he's pulled away from Richard Coates. Now he's on the charge. He's going to try and reel Locker in. He's got half a run to do so. But certainly there, Joey Dunlop has pulled away a big advantage over Richard Coates there. Ian Locker screamed through. The only thing is Joey Dunlop has now got to take those five back markers that Locker has taken somewhere around about Castletown Corner. Here's Jason Griffiths. Jason Griffiths comes through. But uh, the, the battle we're looking at now is Robert Dunlop and Darren Lindsay. Has Dunlop got the charge over Lindsay? Some markers coming through there. We're waiting for Dunlop and Lindsay to come through. But certainly uh, Joey Dunlop, uh, Robert's brother, he's certainly pulling away from Richard Coates, whether he's just been sitting back taking it easy. Oh, here we are. It's Robert Dunlop. And Darren Lindsay behind him. There's... About six bike lengths behind, Robert Dunlop takes the left-hand lane and Darren Lindsay takes the right-hand lane as they come up and they meet in the middle and it's Dunlop holds it off from Darren Lindsay back to Roy McMorris across four ways. Yes, I'm still maintaining 65 as leading the 400s and you come and that's a tremendous achievement there. Number 65, William Flip. 
And Ian Locker's here now. There's no doubt about the 250 winners. I don't think Joey is in view. I don't think he'll be able to pull that back. We strike another mark off on the laps. But you'll keep us informed what the laps are. No, I don't think Joey, no matter how he tries, will be able to catch Ian Locker. He is absolutely flying. But the next machine we expect to see into view, he's got three back markers to negotiate here before cross four ways, being the perfect gentleman that he is. He lets number 69 go around, and that gives Richard Coates a chance. That will be giving Richard Coates a chance there, number 69, Dave Sells. He, Joey Dunlop, he wouldn't carve anybody up on the corner. He let him go through. Dave Madston Migdal, we estimate, is second place in the 400 class, number 25. And number 68, Mike Blake, third, followed by number 49. 49 being on our programme, Paddy Martin, Patrick Martin. There's fourth fifth place in the 250s, number 60, one of the 125s, Phil Corlett. As we mentioned before, nice to see him back, so we'll just look out for that particular dice. I think uh, Dave, uh, Ian Locker's going to fly through BU, but we want to get this dice for the 125s, but look out for 65, 25, 68 and 49. We think that they are the top four in the 400 class. 250 class, it's Ian Locker, we hear, and it's Dunlop who's got it, and he's pulling away now, pulling substantially away, and Darren Lindsay has to get the brakes on exceptionally hard. He's trying. I'll give him that, but back to you at the start and finish, Dave. And Richardson goes to the third. Richardson takes Coates here to take third place. Here Richardson's taken over the local man, and uh, as you hand it over to us there, Neil Richardson on a charge, getting past Richard Coates, demoting him down to fourth place. Ian Locker, by the way, we counted it, 21 seconds ahead of second place man Joey Dunlop. But Joey Dunlop... Jason Griffin. Joey Dunlop, about 21 seconds behind Ian Locker, so um, it looks like Locker's race, Dunlop second, but now Neil Richardson is in third place, he's uh, pushed Richard Coates back to fourth, we have a retirement here, one of the ones we've got, that's uh, number 60 comes through, that's uh, his hands up, he seems fine though, he's coming in as we wait for the battle of Robert Dunlop and Darren Lindsay, and here it is, here's Dunlop. <laughs> The left arm back behind him. He's pulling out now further and further ahead of Darren Lindsay. He's pulled out a second, certainly on that lap. His left arm back, getting as much speed advantage as he can. With oh. Lindsay behind him, back to Roy Moore for hopefully Ian Locker. Ian Locker here. Here he comes. There he is. There he goes, as George Formey would say, and well on his way to Church Bends and substantial lead he's got on that and we are right I think about the 400 class 65, 25, 68 and 49 leading that as mentioned the names we got before 61 we'll give him a mention as he goes through Nick Woodman but Joey Dunlop well ahead on second place now because Richard Coates is an interview and Richardson's got him but Richard Coates goes up the inside but not quite he just has to lead it he was virtually a sandwich between the gable of the house Richard Coates tried to go up the inside but he's demoted to fourth it's Neil Richardson who holds on to that third place but a bit of an overtaking manoeuvre here we've lost track of the lap so we'll be relying on you Dave to say when the last lap flag is out, 69, 76 and 67. I know it's not much use to offer on the listeners 60, saying 69 if they haven't got a programme. Dave Sells and then Robert Doughty. So with the programme going to, to force here, the 125s, 250s and 400s all combined in the station solo founders and the Mono Auto car sales combined, 125, 250 and 400 classes. We're just, as we did the previous time, I think we've just got time to give you the update on the 125s before Ian Locker, who's probably well past you now, Dave, will be just, we'll just give you the update and it's still done. Yes, Joey Dunlop just comes through there. It's... Uh... And Richardson and Coates, so Richardson's third still, Coates uh, hasn't managed to catch up with him. The distance is still the same though when they came past us here on the previous lap. This is now uh, lap eight, they're coming up, there. two more laps to go. But uh, certainly, uh, I think Ian Locke has eased off a little, but he still has an advantage of about 19, 20 seconds over the second place man, Joey Dunlop, with Neil Richardson third. He's, uh, I don't think he's going to catch Dunlop, but uh, Richard Coates, here's Jason Griffiths again. I don't think uh, Jason Coates... Um, Richard Coates, read that as Richard Coates. Uh, that's going to be the battle for third place because Dunlop is going to have second. The way it stays the same. 
We're now waiting for Robert Dunlop and Darren Lindsay. Robert Dunlop before, when he came past here, his head down, his backside was up, and his left arm was tucked in round his back, trying to gain as much speed as he can. And it's certainly working because he'd certainly pulled out an extra second or so on Darren Lindsay as they came round. Is this Dunlop now? Here's this Robert Dunlop. It so certainly is. Here he is, Robert Dunlop. Both hands on the handlebars this time, and he's pulling out even further on Darren Lindsay. Back to Roy McMoor. Roy McMoor. Roy McMoor. Yes, hey, late that'll enough make... there. You're all right. Buddy. It's all Peter yours. Ian Locker's through, and he's close. He's just going to overtake Dave Madsen Mickle, I think. And there's the 400s. One, two, three. 68, Mike Blake, and 49. That's as we mentioned. I think they are confirmed now. Patrick Martin. So it's Ian Locker still. Next interview should come. Matt Jackson gave us a bit of fright here. A couple of laps back as well. Got it anchored up in time and got round. But the standard of riding exceptional, and it's Richardson up to third. So it's Coates fourth. Number 16, Richard Coates, up down to fourth place now. So there's no change on that from the start and finish. Two to go. They'll be getting the old checkered, the, the, the yellow flag with the black stripe on it next. 61, well, he's good commentary point. Nick Woodman gets in again. So next should be Jason Griffiths holding on to that fifth place in the 250 battle. And they should be all getting round on the same lap. But the leader now lapping the 400 leader. There's Jason Griffiths, number two. Nice gentle way around they go too. They seem to drive these two strokes around here now, such as the torque off them. Before you used to be able to drop it down and then have to rev it to Bulgari to get round. But now you're just looking down the road, there's one, two, three coming. This isn't the battle they're looking for. 69, 67 and 76. The last of those being Richard Bairstow, another local performer, followed by another local rider. Bob Doughty, 62, we're just seeing whether he's holding on to that advantage on the 125s. I think with the last lap looming, we'll hold it on for that, but back to you, Dave. It's still Dunlop. Yes, it is. Um, on the road, it's Ian Locker. He's now 28 seconds ahead of Joey Dunlop. I think Joey Dunlop is easing back. It's letting Neil Richardson and Richard Coates um, catch up a little bit. They've gained some advantage on Joey Dunlop over that last lap, uh, over that last, uh, that last lap as they go into the last lap. Uh, certainly waiting for Jason Griffiths, this should be him now, number two. Yes, gets the thumbs up again, Jason Griffiths riding well, riding lonely and riding hard, but in fifth place. But uh, it's Ian Locker's race, we're just going to see if we can get Dunlop and Lindsay through. I'm sure that uh, the way it's been going the last few laps, Dunlop should still be pulling out an advantage over Darren Lindsay. There's two bikes in view now, three bikes in view. Yes, it is, it's Robert Dunlop. Take a check on that. It's not Robert Dunlop. I thought he's got it a bit too quick. It's the same fairing, but from this distance, you couldn't see the numbers. Certainly not the number four, yeah. Robert Dunlop. But uh, I think what we'll do is, seeing as it's the final lap, we'll hand it back to Roy Moore. At, in fact, here is Robert Dunlop. And yes, he's over Darren Lindsay. Back to Roy Moore, cross four ways. Absolutely on cue, Dave, because he's just gone through the split second and still holding that advantage. Ian Locker looking set on this last lap to take the 250 class here. There's Dave Madsen Migdal, number 25. Good battle going on between, again, as it was in the classic race, between number 29, Barry Wood, and Bud Jackson. There's Joey Dunlop second. It's Richardson third. But it's not all that distance. I think it was about the same the last lap from Richard Coates. Neil Richardson holding on to second place, for, uh, third place from Richard Coates. But I don't think he'll be able to do anything of that. We must give the accolade to Ian Locker. We don't want to miss him at the start and finish there. I'm pretty certain now he'll hammered through, down through Great Meadow, up over the little rise, past the hill, down into the very fast left-hander at Stadium Corner. He'll be hard on the brakes going Here into the bridge Here's now. Ian Locker. Ian Locker takes the checkered flag. Gets the win. Left hand waves all the way. Gives it a little wave there. Ian Locker, number five, riding the uh, 250cc Honda. As we wait now for Joey Dunlop. It's Locker's win. We'll, uh, before we move down, we'll, uh, here we are. Here's Joey Dunlop. Yes, a big smile, a big wave from everyone as he goes past. And it's Neil Richardson third and Richard Coates fourth. I'll go down the paddock. You take it over from there, Roy. Yes, we've still got two classes to commentate on here. You get down there, Dave, get the interviews again. It should be a good one for me and Locker, but it was so easy for him. But it, he rode superbly in that, and it's still Robert Dunlop who holds on to the 1-2-5 lead. And it's Bob Doughty in between them. Bob Doughty Jr., that is. And there's Darren Lindsay, number 18. 
So a second place for him in that particular class. So there's the first two. Again, with so much activity going on and looking at numbers and trying to decipher names from the programme, we haven't actually yet, as they is, Barry Wood. He's going well as well on this 250. And Bud Jackson, number 38, just behind him. But I don't think he'll be able to do anything. Looks like third in the 125s is number 19. And that's an excellent ride because he's a newcomer, Chris Palmer, a newcomer to the Southern 100 circuit anyway. He's got the little asterisk by the side of his name. So third face for him in the 125s. And here's Andy Jackson, just number 31, getting to the inside, though. Another local performance there from Chris Gross. So he should be fourth in the 125s, I would think, on the Okra 125. So an excellent performance by him as well. So it should be a big sort out down there. If we can just get the 400s through to give you an update on that, I'm pretty certain you won't be far away from interviews down there at the start and finish, Dave. No, I'm just, just, I'll leave it with you, Roy, and uh, I'll come back to you when you've got the guys through. Hoggy dog, we'll just give you the updates, but an, again, an excellent performance. We do feel as though it was number 65 who was holding on to the 400 class win, although they've been overtaken by Ian Locker on the 250. The 400s are uh, not quite up to the same pace as that, and we'll get the indication that that is the case, unless, unless, as the night draws on, they've been flagged off and given them their finishing positions, which very much looks as though it's the case. Once the winner is over the line, although they've got a lap to go, I'm pretty certain everybody gets flagged off. So it looks as though it was number 65 who took the win in the 400s there. That will be confirmed down at the start and finish, but an excellent performance there by number 65, William Flip. Or Philip, I have to, I have to ask him what his correct title is. We'll have a stab at Philp. Back to you, Dave. Yes, um, just before we get the riders, uh, maybe Paul needs to get a quick break in. Have you tried Jimbo's Manx Dairy Ice Cream? When you do, you'll recognise the genuine old-fashioned taste of a unique ice cream made in the traditional way, using natural ingredients and containing real fruits and chocolate. Jimbo's is available from ShopRite and other shops and kiosks throughout the island. Ask for it by name. Jimbo's Premium Manx Dairy Ice Cream, the taste that takes you back. Now you really can say it with flowers with Poster Rose. A selection of bouquets of the finest Manx roses from Balakinish Nurseries can wing its way to anywhere in the UK from as little as £9.99. And with a guaranteed vase life of 14 days, it's a beautiful gift that really lasts. So whatever the occasion, post a rose by calling Balakinish Nurseries on 662410. That's 662410. For competitive car rental, contact Freshfield. They offer free collection and delivery at Liverpool, Quayside and Airport. For cars, vans and minibuses with no mileage charge, call Freshfield Self-Drive on 0151 448 0134. See the courier or your travel agent. House and Home Design Shop's summer promotion has 30% off selected Sanderson and Children's Bedding and 25% off Christie's Fairfield Plain Towels, but only while stocks last. Their new ranges include children's bedding, Christie towels, beautiful table linen, cushions and much more. All at the House and Home Design Shop, Village Walk, Onken. We've all heard of summer sales. Well, here's a summer sale with prices so hot, no other retailer can touch them. It's at Paradise and Gell, of course. There's genuine price reductions on their huge range of famous name furniture, like Meriden, Frailing, Ducal, Sleep Easy and Slumberland. Whether it's furniture for your lounge, dining room or bedroom, the reductions are fantastic, some over 50%. So don't miss Paradise and Gell's Super Summer Sale, now on at their Michael Street Peel showrooms. It's 8.29, this is Manx Radio Broadcasting from Douglas and live at the Blown Circuit tonight is Dave Moore. Yes, we've got Ian Locker here. Ian Locker, well done. Thanks very much, yep. yep. That was about, we got about something like 28 seconds over this man stood next to you, Mr Dunlop. Right, yeah. I, I just don't feel... Uh, the first couple of laps I felt OK, but uh, I didn't feel really motivated after that, you know, after what happened yesterday. and Just... Um, yeah, it's good to win it, but uh, it's just uh, small. But even so, you know, it's, uh, you, you did it, you kept it on the, on the pace and uh, kept it going no matter what. So, mm. I mean, a, a well-deserved win. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. OK, we'll move... Uh, we'll let you go and get uh, your pre presentation. We've got, uh, I know Neil Richardson's just walking past. Neil Richardson, third place there on the road. Yeah, yeah very happy with that. A bit of a catch and, cat and mouse game, but I was pleased with that result. All right, we'll let you go and get your rewards. OK, we'll just uh, hand back to you for a second, Roy, while we, uh, while the Southern 100 boys have their guys up here. <laughs> as uh, we see Robert Dunlop going up, uh, he's confirmed as the uh, 125 and 400cc class winner, a combined class. 
So uh, Robert Dunlop's up there. In fact, we'll stay with this for a moment. Uh, we'll look at the podium. Joey Dunlop and uh, Neil Richardson. Ian Locker, of course, the race winner. And Robert Dunlop, the winner of the 125 400 cc and I was looking, I know Richard Coates was here a second ago, he got pushed down, he was in second place at one stage during that race, but got pushed back to fourth. We'll uh, just sneak down here, and we'll uh, sneak in and listen on the presentation. Whoa. Ian Locker receiving his winner's garland and his uh, cap there. In second place, Joey Dunlop. Third place, Neil Richardson. And the first one, two, five, Robert Dunlop. There you go, Robert Dunlop there. A great, great battle with uh, Darren Lindsay. Pulling away from him, though, the last uh, three laps, you think, of that race. But uh, fantastic racing here again, Roy. And uh, I think the way the light's going, these sidecars are going to be quick. I think they're going to have to be quick as well. We don't think your mate has just uh, put about uh, two years on a tyre just around the corner here <laughs> across four ways. They are absolutely enjoying themselves, the boys, as they're going around. I must admit, thrilling the crowd. It's all serious stuff. They're not trying too hard. They just came in five together, so it's a bit of an organisation on that. Yes, but the sidecar should be good round here. And the presentation there taking place for what was an excellent race, really. But the, the views of Ian Locker express the views of everybody, I think. Although we're getting excited here and that, we've got good memories and things like aren't quite right. But at the same time, the boys are out here entertaining us. And, uh, well, you've just got to crack on. So the Agrimark, today's group sidecar race, next on the agenda. That's race six, and we should be back on schedule after this, I think, this particular one. But it is uh, 8.30, and I think they'll have to be pretty sharp to get this particular one in. But the sidecar boys, not too many non-starters in that. I'm sure you'll update us on that particular yes, system, so, Dave. Yes, I will. Uh, sort of being very quick, one man who was very quick, just very briefly, uh, our second interview with Mr Coates tonight, second place, but dropped down to fourth. Fourth in the end, yeah. I actually suffered from pins and needles in my right hand towards the end of the race. I couldn't quite keep the pace up. So it was, you not, the, it was you, not the bike The then. bike was absolutely fine, but uh, yeah, I suffered a little bit towards the end, got a bit tired. You'll be okay for tomorrow? Uh, no, the bike's going back to Vimto Honda tomorrow, who use it at the Alton Park Super Cup round, so that's it for me. That's it. Yeah. Okay, but uh, thanks for entertaining us anyway, Richard. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, oh, there's some smoke down here. Uh, I still know news on there, the two chaps at the beginning. Neil Hodgson there is doing a burnout. <laughs> on the uh, R1, what everyone wants for Christmas, I think. <laughs> Neil Hodgson playing to the crowd, and what a sizable crowd there is here as well. Down here at uh, the Southern <laughs> Country. <laughs> yes, it's uh, certainly a carnival like atmosphere with uh, Messrs. Hislop, Jeffries, and uh, Hodge in the smoke. It's still clear. You can probably see it from where you are, Roy. Yes, I just can. You'll probably be able to see the one that he left here across four <laughs> ways. So the <laughs> Oh, they're enjoying it anyway. It's good fun and it just breaks the, the thing. But the, such is the organisation of the Southern 100 Club that the inspection cars have gone round. They've picked up the, the retired riders on the way, one or two sided there. But there seemed to be quite a few kept going in that particular race. 